What's up guys, it is Slime103 here, back for part 3 of our Hammer tutorial series. Just want to say sorry this took so long, there were uh, many issues, but we are here nonetheless, and we're going to just take a quick walkthrough of what we did last time. Basically, we just got this to push, we got this little elevator working nice, breakable glass, you know, a door, we got a secret right here, some water, and you press that, this opens, so, very nice, uh, block BSP structure we have built out right now. And today we are basically going to decorate it. So we're going to go to tutorial 3. I'm going to need to turn off a Fulbright. Zero. So as you can see, we're going to do some propping and some lighting today. Uh, we can going to learn how to add things like this, some fire this so that when you press E it'll give you something uh, let's go up here still got our standard secret we got glowing props uh, doors that open on rotation As you can see lights with different skins obviously at ladder is pretty simple um, adding the little glow effect you can see right there you know different color lights and just you know making things look a whole lot nicer but just adding simple props with a rope and everything and spotlights and yeah so let's go into the editor oh also I want to point out though there's nice little particles in the air so yeah now let's go into hammer Pretty standard, not much going on. This button I set up incorrectly, which we'll... I don't know why I did that, but we're going to go over how to fix that in this next tutorial. And yeah, let's jump right into it. So, tutorial 3. This is from... This first couple things are from the last tutorial. So this is a functional brush, which goes along with lighting. It's a funk dust moat. And what it does is add little particles in the trigger where you place it, and then it makes it look like the light's uh, reflecting off of them. Uh, and you can adjust the speed, lifetime, and size, and obviously the color. And it just makes things look a little bit nicer. So, uh, I think I pressed P. Yeah, all right. So if you press P, it brings up that, uh, just if you wanted to know that. I don't know, I guess that was on. So <laughs> let's go back to our funk button. And as you can see, the sky door should be on toggle, not open and close at the same time. And that fixes it. So yeah, pretty simple stuff from the last tutorial. But now we're going to actually go into... Uh, propping. So typically, after you create the world geometry, you do something called meshing. Now, meshing is where you take a bunch of static props, and similar to how you'd make a movie set, you'd sort of piece them all together to completely replace all the world geometry you created in this editor. Because as you can see, it's awfully primitive, and it's not that nice to look at. So with the proper 3D editing software, you'd go ahead and make an actual mesh, which is what props are made of, and replace all the geometry, and then everything would look super nice, as they do in like modern AAA games. But Source Engine is still pretty primitive, and we're not actually gonna do that in this tutorial, so just know that's how you do it. If you want a tutorial in the future, we can do that, but for now, we're going to stick to the basics of propping and lighting, just completely skipping that step. So, creating an entity, which is an object entity, not a brush entity. 
we just go ahead and click this right here. I think we did that in the last tutorial, but anyway, similar to our brush entities, we get this drop down of the class, and there are a lot of different classes you can select from. Basically, we're gonna go over the most frequently used ones and we're not going to go over anything else. So with that said, prop static is probably the most common entity you're going to be making. That is what all of, that is what this is, uh, that's what this is, uh, this is, there's a lot of prop statics is what I'm trying to say, but also there are, if we just shift drag this to duplicate, duplicate it twice. can also make a prop P for physics, physics multiplayer, most commonly used, and a prop dynamic right there. All right. Uh, and also you can make stuff glow. So if we just type in prop, as you can see, we got door rotating, dynamic, dynamic override ornament, exploding barrel is actually pretty fun. And, uh, Prop ragdoll static. Uh, I don't. I don't think vehicles work. But yeah, also glow. So those are all the props you need to worry about. I thought I just. There we go. Apply. So in order to actually make this become a couch, uh, you're gonna have to do something extremely magical called selecting the world model. So as you can see, we get the model browser right here uh, when you double click world model and make sure this is on model files. Otherwise you might be in a specific directory, which you may want, but probably most of the time you want access to all of the models that are available in Counter-Strike. So in order to do that, make sure you have that selected for the directory. And now in the filter, you can type in keywords to actually search for the specific model you want. So for example, Door will bring up props related to doors. So as you can see, we have a door frame. We have actual doors. We have garage doors. We got sliding doors. We got doorbells. We got I don't understand why this is in here, but yeah. And we get other stuff as well sometimes. So that is how that works. But we're gonna be using a soda soda can just because it's small and you know there's a bunch so anyways just select one actually don't do that quite yet because I forgot to mention that you need to make sure it's compatible with the actual prop type you are selecting uh, because when the model is compiled it may not be compiled for uh, what you want so by default most of them are gonna be static because it's the most frequently used uh, but also, there's physics and dynamic, which you're going to need to be more careful about if that's the prop you want. But always go ahead and check info before you actually select the model you want. And then some skins have some models have skins, which we will look out uh, look at soon. And then you can also obviously look at the collision model from here. Uh, take out the annoying thing. So this wireframe is what you actually create in the 3D modeling software, which yeah, probably make that in a tutorial soon, but also the collision model, if depending, the reason I mentioned that is because you may want to use the bounding box. So we go ahead and hit apply, it'll bring it up. And as you can see, there's a bounding box right here, which is, uh, that's just what, that's what this yellow thing is. And so if you want to use that for collision, you go down here and go to collisions. You can choose not solid, say if you want a bookshelf you can walk through. Obviously V physics is the more accurate uh, representation of the actual physics of the model. Uh, or we have use bounding box, which is the yellow thing. So now you know how that works. Color RGB, honestly don't know what that does. Uh, I don't know if that might be for glow, but yeah, anyways, you don't need to use that for static props usually. Pitch yaw roll, you're gonna wanna change this pretty much every time you bring in a model to your world. So as you can see, if we go down here, you know, bring it up. Why don't we just 
make this bigger for you if you're watching on mobile or something. So if we bring this up, we have pitch yaw roll, like I said, in the Y, Z, X fashion. Then you also have angles up here. So if we go ahead and just move that like that or like that, it will do that. And you can also do down, which will you know bring it to its side. And also you can manually manually adjust these. Typically, you're, want, you're going to want to use 90, 180, or 270, just because that's increments of 90, um, so you can spin things around really easily. Say if it's a couch, uh, most because you're building on a grid, most of the time you're not going to want things to be just randomly diagonal, and then that's that's just kind of annoying to deal with in general, especially if, if you have a completely diagonal room. It doesn't really work well with the grids. So typically, like I said, 90, 180, 270 for the uh, actual pitch yaw roll over here. So that's pretty much static prop. Don't really have to worry about anything other than that because it just sits in a level and it makes it, it makes things look good. So it's not just a barren wasteland of random blocks. So from there we also, well let's go to dynamic first. Dynamic essentially allows you to have a static prop that you can now parent to say a door. So if you have a, a, a light, let's get a light board model. Let's type in light, scroll down, use the arrow keys. I don't know if I mentioned that, but let's see if we can grab a light here. So let's say we have this light and as you can see it's meant to be attached to something right here so if this was attached to say a door that was moving you put that into the parent and now when the door moves so will the light along with it so very useful for that case don't know many many other cases you cases you use it for but that's what i have used it for in the past and Let's see, that's the same sort of collision and all that. Uh, the one thing I will mention is, let's see. Well, I'll wait, but there's also flags. Collision, all that stuff. There's a lot of just like, different random things for just, you know, random use cases that you might have, but Essentially, that is what a dynamic prop does. It does use more memory, so stick to static props if you can. But again, uh, make sure that it's compiled for the right thing on dynamic prop. All right, so physics prop, let's grab our soda can again. So we go ahead and bring this here, move it up. There we go. This will now have physics essentially, so if you walk into it, it is going to move. Uh, and it's the same sort of stuff with static prop. Uh, but you, unlike dynamic props, I don't believe you can parent these to anything. It will just use physics instead. So like I said, you bump into it, it'll move. Pretty self-explanatory. But before we and everything there we have skins and body groups so as you can see this is a red light light red 2 model this is also a red light 2 model so why is that S models can have multiple skins so as you can see it's a red light lit uh, unlit lit unlit lit so it's the same model you're just changing the textures essentially but there are also body groups. So if we go to the uh, Perca Cola bottles I have on Luftungshast, then you can see the different body groups. I think they might have to be dynamic, but let's see. Let's go to, I think it was Juggernaut Soda. Maybe it's Perca Cola. So, oh, here we go. So, Perca Cola bottle right there. And 
let's see if we go to skins as you can see it only has one skin and this confused me a lot because I was like well, where are all the other models at I got this should be jug revive speed cool all that so in certain cases the model itself can actually change so you have to change body so I think that has to be dynamic as you can see there's a body now so if we update this to one we get revive with the juggernaut cap and if we change this to two we get speed sleight of hand with the juggernaut cap and so you get all these different combinations and so eventually there's just the cap eventually you can you know just scroll through with all the different combinations you want of the different body groups so in this case it was the cap and the bottle and those were changing so as you can see it has a little blurb here to explain it uh, but yeah that really confused me essentially that's all you have to do though so there is that that is very nice one thing that we need to go over as well are the flags for physics multiplayer props so as you can see this TV if it were to just spawn in the world like this it would just fall straight off the wall because gravity so in order to stop it from doing that just turn on motion disable and that will disable the motion there's all these other ones that you can also use typically you'll want to use either yeah don't take physics damage start asleep or motion disable and that's usually all you need pretty self-explanatory uh, stuff there as well and what else do I need to go over ah yes door rotating so once you select your door frame and your proper door uh, what you're gonna want to do is make sure you get a prop door rotating and you know select the model make sure it's compatible all that and you don't need a parent or anything let's see same sort of pitch out roll stuff but here as you can see I've added a glow you can also do this with the dynamic glow but can make certain certain things gl glow if you want the player to know he should interact with something and just make it glow and be like oh maybe I'm supposed to find a key to unlock this glowing door you know that kind of thing and you can select glow distance and that but the most important thing is you have it on use closes or use opens it depends on the actual model but use opens or use, otherwise when they press E nothing's gonna happen you're gonna be sad unless that you that's intentional you don't want the door to open in that case just leave it unchecked but don't think you need to worry about anything else other than start locked if it's a locked door and you want it to be opened with a key like I said but the other most important thing is we go over here it has a pivot point so let me actually select this nope over here there we go so it has a little pivot point right there as you can see but there should be a little ball I somehow turn that off I thought it was this button hold up that ball is missing or is it no it's right here okay here it is all right I couldn't find it for some reason but it is now found so as you can see it has this little ball thing and then it has another little ball thing and this is how it rotates it will rotate around that point so make sure wherever the pivot is in the door you put those little balls in there that sounded a little weird but as you can see there's a little blue ball right there so yeah make sure your your balls are in order for to make sure the the door rotates so that basically covers props so yeah also yeah that's that's all you need to worry about for props alright so let's get into a bit of lighting now 
So by default, the most standard light you're gonna wanna use is the light class. Ooh, who would have thought? And essentially, you can change brightness. So the first three values are color values, and then the last value is the brightness value. By default, it'll be 200. 200 is pretty bright, so usually you're gonna wanna bring that down unless it's a really large room. And then you'll have brightness HDR, which you don't really need to change. I believe it has something to do with, actually these three values have to do with uh, how the light's calculated. And then you have fallout, fall off distance, obviously, which can also be altered. But typically all you need to change is brightness. And then there's one flag which is initially dark if you want to have a button that turns the light on and off, that sort of thing. And you want it to start off, obviously. So appearance, you can also change, which I should probably mention because there's different. So if you want it to pulse, you can change it to pulse and then it will pulse. Pretty, pretty normal. I'll change one light to pulse over here so you can see it when we go back in game let's do fast strobe that way it will be easy to see all right so make sure you have a, a model to actually go along with the light otherwise it's going to be a light for no reason and you're like what what is going on here so make sure you always have a model unless it's you just want to add like outdoor light if the sun's not doing its job, it's not bright enough. And you want it, if it's important area, you want it to be more well lit. Also make sure this is not right next to it. Otherwise there's gonna be a giant, you know, blotch on the ceiling, move it down a bit. Uh, and so that's more towards the middle of the room and you get more even lighting across like it would be in real life. So. As you can see, I have a lamp in the corner right there, but it would be super, super bright right here. So I just moved the light off to the side. All right, so we also have glowing, that little glow effects. So as you can see, well, it looks better in game, but you can kind of see that it's glowing. I think we looked at that. But you have color, like normal, glow mode, Mostly put this on glow or world space glow. Um, and I kind of forget what additive does, but you can always look that up on Steam. Don't really use these that much. Uh, you, I pretty much only use these if there's a candle. Uh, but other than that, I would def I wouldn't use these. I don't know. They just they don't really look real to me. So if it's a candle, I guess kind of, but. Other than that, not really. And you can also change the sprite with different textures, as you can see here. And obviously the size of the glow. All you really need to worry about, start on play one, self-explanatory stuff. You can parent it as well. Uh, and then as you can see, this light's kind of off a little bit from the actual, it's not in the lamp, it just makes it look better, if you know what I'm saying there. All right, spotlights. So actually, before we go over spotlight, the other most typical light you're gonna use is something called a light spot. Now, this essentially is a light that is directional. I don't know if there's a light directional, light dynamic. So this is the equivalent of a light directional, in my opinion. Uh, and basically, it has this inner, this inner field, and then it has this outer field and you can adjust that so this is where it's gonna be bright like a normal light and then after that it falls off a lot so these have to be really strong typically so as you can see if we go to brightness it's on 700 which is the default value for the normal light is 200 and that's pretty bright the default value for this is also 200 and you like you can't even see that so you gotta turn it up a lot I think on Luftungschast I did like 750 for the uh, outdoor indoor area if you know what I'm talking about. Brightness HDR you don't really need to change and then obviously you can you know do all that. It's on kind of a weird thing. <laughs> uh, 
and then pitch but what you need to focus on is the inner bright angle and the outer fading angle and that is actually what changes the radius I believe of the oh yeah it's angle not radius but it will change you know how big these are and then flag initially dark and that's going to add this directional light but to actually make it look like a super bright spotlight you're going to need to add a point spotlight and again same thing color pitch yaw roll spotlight width is what you'll need to alter start on no dynamic light i believe those are already checked when you create one and so that is the spotlight point spotlight so now getting into outdoor lighting you need to add in order to compile you're going to have at least one of these unless you don't have and you don't want reflections uh, is that so example if you put in a mirror it's not going to be reflective at all um, but if you add one of these it's going to have the wrong reflections but nonetheless it's going to have reflection it's going to have reflective properties so put one of these at least one of these in your level somewhere um, you can add them in particular areas where you want reflections to be stronger but actually before we get to outdoor lighting as you can see I've added some lights in here just to make uh, the outdoor lights seem brighter even though they're not yeah, so that's why I added them you know guess I didn't really need to explain that but keyframe keyframe rope is how you add ropes or um, you can actually change the uh, type over here oh no that's not it semi-rigid or rigid is the ah, here it is that's how much it will droop I'm pretty sure but rope material as you can see it's on cable but you can actually you can change it if you want it to be uh, um, like a power line maybe uh, but this looks this looks pretty standard uh, yeah I know, yeah, I know. Uh, you, you, you understand this, hopefully. But all you need to do is change the next keyframe. Uh, make sure you name both of them, and then it will just go from one keyframe to the other. And you don't really need to worry about any of this other stuff except for slack. So how much extra length the rope has. So obviously the longer it gets, the more it's going to droop down. And I believe... Uh, its droopiness is that's just basically how you edit it I don't know what I was gonna say there but yeah alright so light environment is the next thing uh, if you if you have outdoor parts of your level of your level essentially you have a skybox so if you have skybox this is what creates the light from this is the light from the skybox essentially so when you figure out where your sun is so actually let's go to counter-strike global offensive skylist on the valve developer community website and when you select your skybox uh, essentially there's this ideal sun angle and this ideal sun pitch uh, you'd want these uh, values to align with your light environment so as you can see, you just copy paste those in. But if you want it to be completely custom, and then what you do is you'd grab it, you'd put it somewhere, wherever your sun, wherever you want your physical sun to be, and then you'd do point at, and you'd click someplace, and then that's that's what determines where your sun is in your level, and you know at what angle it's pointed. So we're not actually going to do that because I already have it configured. There we go. So that, you know, these shadows align with the dust motes and all that. So obviously once you have that, bring it back into your level so you can compile. But from there, you were going to want to adjust brightness, ambient, ambient brightness, HDR, and ambient HDR. So if you've ever done color grading for video editing, or if you've ever, yeah, video editing essentially, if you've ever done that, then you know 
Uh, you typically want a high contrast for this type of thing. So in, in order to find out the best complementary colors, what you're going to want to do is go to uh, the Adobe Color. And you can either do compound or complementary. And then usually the most typical color grade you're going to see is this orangey yellow and this nice blue and basically that provides good contrast uh, for people's faces to be well lit and colorful and then also the sky to be nice and blue essentially so that's what I've done here very basic just put in some orange and some blue and then same sort of thing for brightness and ambient HDR and just make sure they complement each other and then usually you want high contrast so yeah pitch yaw roll we already went over that sun spread angle never used this but it could be useful so I don't know if you want to look that up but after you have that set up you can go edit your sun so you're going to need to add an envy sun and whatever angle you have from the skybox and the light environment just copy paste that in here as well and then obviously use angles yeah set yes for that and then sun color just creates the color of the sun which uh, I don't think I showed you that in game but we can look at it and then that's all you really need to do but one thing that we need to go over is if you go up to map and then map properties this is how you change the skybox texture so if we go back to this you're gonna need to copy paste this in so I guess we can just grab CS Italy and if we put that in hit apply it'll now be the skybox of CS Italy so quick and easy although you're gonna need to alter the values for your environment Sun and uh, light to make it all synchronized otherwise the Sun is gonna be in a completely different place and the lighting is gonna be off and you know you see where I'm going with that alright now on the server commands you just need to add one of these so that you can actually input commands into the server so when you start the map it'll start running things automatically so it's complemented by a logic auto which will tell the server command what to do so it's a little bit like programming you just put in a command and you select the target I named this command so if we go back to outputs here we have on background map command which is the uh, name of the entity and then the actual thing you're going to want to do is command so very easy if you name it command use command command and then you actually put in what you would put into the developer console while you're in game and it will just run it automatically so if you want to have the map talk to you which is what Yoba usually does and I just kinda stole this from him actually he gave it to me but yeah which will say like three two one hiders are or seekers are released you can just add that via say and then whatever and then after the delay and then these are just some very typical ones that you're gonna need to use freeze time bot kick warm up end round time team limit and then probably if you want team auto balance off all that sort of stuff that you do when you normally start a private server just put in there and then if you're doing a hide and seek map uh, where you want them only to have knives what you're going to want to do is add a game player equip and then take off smart edit and do add weapon underscore knife value one and then hit apply and that's all you need to do don't worry about anything else uh, you can obviously do the strip all weapons first um, but otherwise don't worry about it alright environment sum we already went over that so the last thing we need to do 
is wow i feel like this is a really long tutorial but the last thing that was kind of fun that i did on my previous map seek lifting shots was make it so that when you click on a button it'll spawn an item which is just a fun thing to do so obviously we have our button we have our actual item that we would like to spawn in this case a weapon underscore health shot and if you make it the entity an actual weapon that means it can be picked up which is whereas if you add a static prop and select the model of the weapon then you're not going to be able to pick it up if that makes sense so yeah name the weapon whatever you want and then you're going to need to create a point template name it whatever you want and then the point template will point to the different templates that you want to spawn in this case the weapon health shot you can add up to 16 so if you want to spawn 16 different things at the same time maybe you enter a trigger and you want a bunch of boxes to spawn and like fall from the sky or something like that this is how you do that and then you have an environment entity maker which will point to the template and then the pointlet the point template spawns all of the templates so yeah it's just i made this med maker points to the template the template points to the med shot so then when the button is actually pressed on pressed med maker force spawn and then after zero seconds and obviously self-explanatory stuff from there you can add delay reset all your casual button stuff and then yeah make sure you have an interface to actually what you want them to press e on but i think that's gonna do it for this tutorial it has been a very long one uh this is a static prop i don't know why i felt like pointing that out but i did so now you know uh let's go in in game actually let's compile this I realized in editing that I forgot to tell you guys how to make a fire, so we're gonna do that. Environment fire. That's it. And there's also like environment sparks and something else that you can also do. Oh, and explosion. I love making some explosions. You gotta put it on size, wherever you want, and in units. It usually starts at 64, but that's way too big. Infinite duration start on start full, and then add a orange light because the glow is just not bright at all. And boom, that's a fire. Alrighty. As you can see, we are in the game. Very nice. World's finest lamp says hi. Easy server command. Uh, as you can see, certain props, there was the physics prop, uh, don't actually work with what they say they're compiled for, which is kind of annoying. So you have to go in and look through the when it compiles it will give you that little list and then usually it's highlighted in yellow and you can figure out what you need to change but as you can see we got our physics prop there which we can knife physics prop there which we can knife bam bam these are all physics props we got our nice spotlight and we got our glow thing all good stuff. Dust motes. CS Italy does not seem to be working. <laughs> but our sun, as you can see, is pink and in the sky. So, uh, something went wrong there, but if it was still on dust, you'd see the dust sky. I don't really want to look at that. That's kind of terrible to look at. But, yeah, that's, that's all we need to... There's our strobe light very cool so yeah i think that's gonna do it for this tutorial guys i'm gonna it's been a very long one i'll try to make the next one shorter but a lot of stuff covered i hope you found it informational and i'll see you guys in the next one so yeah thanks for watching as always and peace okay so i forgot to mention something very very important why i was i noticed while i was editing guys Funk fish pool, dude. That's where it's all at. Gotta add the goldfish with the fish count in the max range. Alright, that, that's all I needed to say. Alright, enjoy, guys. Nice job.